Is boys and girls champs destroying Jamaica's future athletic stars? Welcome back to the channel, people. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for making it Peter Lloyd World. Now, please hit that subscribe button so we can continue to grow. We have a, we have a personal goal of getting to 10,000 subs. We are almost there. And that's simply because of persons like yourself hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoy our content, hit the like button. It's really, really good. The engagement, the algorithms absolutely love it and it gets the content out. So hit the like button. And of course, please leave a comment. I often learn so much. Sometimes it make me laugh. <laughs> Sometimes I disagree. But I still learn. So are you ready for talk about this? Are you ready? Yep. Good to go. I'm a big deal. I'm a friend. I'm a big deal. Yes, there can be no doubt that this is Boys and Girls Champs, which is now called, is a big deal. In fact, the championship, which started in 1910, is the biggest deal in terms of sports events, heck, in terms of any event in Jamaica and possibly the Caribbean annually. So today we're going to look at whether or not chance in its current form and over the years has done more harm than good to our future athletic stars. Now before the jump down, don't, before they get vexed. Let's have a discussion. All right. In the 1980s, Racers Track Club, helmed by the one and only Glenn Mills, Coach Glenn Mills, was started primarily to ensure the transition of uh, top athletes to the professional stage. In 1999, September to be exact, Steve Francis, Paul Francis, David Noel, and Bruce James at Woolmer's Boys School in Kingston started the MVP Track Club. It was established to provide Jamaican athletes a Jamaican option for post high school track and field training. Now, there was a very specific reason for this, people. Um, many of our young athletes were leaving Jamaica and heading to colleges overseas to train but the transition often went extremely badly so meaning they they were not successfully transitioning as top amateur athletic stars into professional athletes in fact in most instances i remember um, my days in high school some of our top top track athletes at the time who were gold medalists at champ boys and girls champs when they got their college um when they got their scholarships and went overseas we pretty much never ever heard from them ever again and this seems to be seems to happen far more often um you know than one would like so both glenn mills uh racers track club and Stephen francis and bruce james and others um uh, which is MVP Track Club, started these track clubs to give uh, local um, boys and girls an option to stay here in Jamaica and be trained by Jamaicans um, who, you know, who love Jamaica. Um, the great coach Stephen Francis said it's best. Youngsters used to almost exclusively leave the country, go overseas, uh, for 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 their education, um, rely on persons who are not particularly interested in the development of Jamaica. This, of course, is a hundred percent accurate. Coach Francis is correct. Um, the moment uh, the local track clubs were formulated uh, and were able to draft local talent, we saw a dramatic increase in medal haul from things like the Olympics. Um, the, the the world championships uh diamond league we saw the emergence of a uh, shelly and fraser price we saw the em emergence of a freighter we saw the emergence of a usain bolt a johan blake i can keep going on so clearly um this is a sore point not to mention that in many of my vlogs many of you um uh track fans out of jamaica say this to me constantly why are athletes still going overseas 
So definitely this is one of the reasons why I think that transition is not being made successfully from the amateur league into the pro league. It is definitely a major um, problem and perhaps we need more racers uh, track clubs and more MBT and I see I, I think it, I think there are a few new ones that are being formulated. So however I do believe that there is still a contact a context in which champs itself has also impacted that transition right because uh, <laughs> how would I put this now there is more to this than meets the, the eye now let's look at this um, in the pressboltnews.com they state in conclusion they are Apart from baseball, the chances of going from college sports players to professional athletes are 2%. The rule of thumb in football are every 100 high school players, only one play, plays in Division 1. So the stats, seem to, the stats would state that only 2% of our, our um, amateur athletes are going to become pros anyway and become top creme de la creme. Uh, two percent is a is a really tiny number, you know. So if we were to follow these statistics, it would mean that not many of our um, amateur champs stars are going to become successful at what they're doing, according to the stats. Of course, you know stats. The stats can be questioned. Now, there is an additional uh, there are additional aspects to this conversation that we need to also look at. So we've looked at two. One, that, that transition, um, only 2% will make it successfully. And secondarily, we have, uh, we have also touched on the fact that um, a lot of the athletes who do not make the transition, it, one of the possible reasons that they didn't stay in Jamaica to be coached by Jamaicans who have a concern for Jamaica. All right. I don't think we can question that Champs produces champions. But how prepared are these champions? I mean, how has their coaching, the coaching staff at their, high, their, their respective high schools, ex developed them not just in terms of their ability to run or to jump or to, you know, whatever sport that they're in. Have they been prepared mentally? Um, are they being prepared for that transition? Because remember, I always say in my vlogs, the psychology of something is extremely important. That's the psychological element of an, of, of a, of an athlete is equally, if not sometimes more important than their sheer talent. Are these athletes being prepared properly? Um, in an article written by uh, Paul Reed, um, he notes that Glenn Mills, uh, president of Racers Track Club, and there's going to be jumping around, basically states, um, he said, success at the Inter Intersecondary School Sports Association, ISSA, ISA, Grace, Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championship ships was not a guarantee of success at the next level, as a lot of the youngsters were not properly prepared for the transition and what it will take for them to gain success. Hmm. Um, I think that's that's important and it speaks to exactly what I'm saying. These are the words of um, the great Glenn Mills people, one of the two or three greatest uh, track coaches currently alive in the world as we speak. Glenn Mills goes on in the article and says, these athletes, he said, would have lots of difficulties with transitioning from the kind of freedom that you have at the, at the high school level as it relates to, to now becoming a professional athlete. Um, he, a lot of them have not had any kind of preparation psychologically, mentally and otherwise to cope with the sudden change of becoming a professional athlete. And so you find that the attrition rate of success is very low. I have never, I have not done a formal survey, but less than 5% of them don't make it past the first stage. And this drives on my first point. You know, if we're going to prepare athletes to run really fast, uh, to jump really low, high or, you know, 
whatever. We have to start preparing them psychologically because as I keep saying in the vlogs, the psychology of the act of the of, of the athlete is as important and in some instances much more important than their sheer talent. Um, a point I'm going to uh, talk about a little more. Now, in a recent in interview given uh, by Coach Glenn Mills on Sportsmax, he goes on to talk about the success rate of the female athletes versus the male athletes. And listen. I did the stats, people. It's true. The women athletes are just generally more successful than the men, male athletes. All right? So let's listen. The, when you look at even the, the, the girls' championship um, locally, when you look at the, per, the, the number of, of young women who demonstrate um, world-class performances. So I'm not surprised that went on to state in the uh, article written by Paul Reed. He stated um, a great deal of assessment and research into that ath athlete's development pathway and ability to be successful at the next level. Great attention should be paid because it's not everybody who runs a fast time at champs is really designed to do well at the next level. I wasn't a per se star in high school. I didn't have really brilliant times to carry me so um, I looked at places where coaches have taken athletes that aren't brilliant people to brilliant. Look at Bolt, he, people told him he was too tall to run the 100 but he defied the odds, he didn't listen and that's what you should do because the sky is the limit, I mean not even the sky, the stars. Now that's um, Megan Tapper, an interview she gave a few years ago before of course she went on to win bronze early this year. Uh, becoming the first female to do this in the women's 100 meter hurdles and this brings me to a, a really interesting point you see most of the athletes who have gone on to do extremely well at the professional level did not do very well at chance elaine thompson shelly and fraser price megan tapper i can keep going down the list were not massive stars at boys and girls championship in fact they were at best, I mean, Megan Tapper said it, they were okay. They were not champions. They were not winners at champs. They were, they were not the creme de la creme, the best of the best. And I find it interesting because I realize that, I mean, I can't say much about racers track club, but I can see definitely in terms of um, Steve Francis's track club, MVP track club. Yeah, MVP track club, himself and uh, Bruce James seem to have a very different kind of philosophy. Their philosophy is if you have good enough talent, but you have the right mindset, the right mentality, if you're willing to do the work, then we can transform you. Megan Tapper said it. She said, I was okay. And I, you go do the research, people. Trust me. Shelly Ann was no superstar. Elaine Thompson was no superstar. You know, most of these persons bold started running relatively late and yes he was a star you're going to have a few exceptions but most of the athletes who are now shining uh, and have been shining over the last 15 to 20 years at that international level were not massive stars and it would appear to me that NDP track club I'm not going to say they avoid them but yeah I'm going to say I think they, they seem to avoid the, the, the champs superstars they pick up athletes who you know understand the psychology of what it takes to become a superstar or, or, or a star or to become a pro athlete I, I i read the same quote to you from glenn mills now listen to the words of stephen francis his philosophy is interesting the road to success is large and comfortable you know, it is it is it must be 80 percent hard I mean, 80% of the time, you must be wishing that you were somewhere else, you know. Um, I Maybe the reason why uh, Stephen Francis uh, and MVP and, and uh, some of these other coaches avoid champ stars is because champ stars develop a mentality, the wrong mentality, you know. They, they, they're, they're stars at a particular level and maybe they think it's going to be easy to get to that next level. I mean, there must be a specific reason. Why the athletes who are shining now, the world's fastest woman and second fastest woman, were not champ stars. 
there, there must be a reason why these coaches are singling, singling them out. So that's one of my primary things. Two, one, the, the champ stars and champ athletes, the champ coaches are not preparing these, these, uh, these, these young talents psychologically for what's to come next. They're not preparing them for the next level. Two, I believe that the fact that there's such massive stars across the entire island, sometimes it might get to the ego, it might get to, you know, I mean, Jamaicans would use the word hype. I don't want to reference that to these youngsters. But I think maybe they believe that the next level is going to be just as easy or, you know, and not even not much more difficult. And they expect, okay, here's a word, they become entitled. So there must, and this may be the reason why a Stephen Francis, etc., would avoid them. Here's a third reason why I think Champs is impacting us in a negative way. Injury. Now, I've said repeatedly on this channel that injury is the bane, it is the curse of the athlete. Um, we have seen so many amazing young talents fall by the wayside. A few rise back, but it takes a long time for them to recover. And they, they fall at the time that should be their, their peak psychologically. Now, when I say peak, when I say fall, I'm referencing injury. I mean, look at Chris Taylor at the end of 2019. Why would his coach allow him to run this race when he was injured? Of course, there's a, there's a possibility that the coach didn't know. But there are so many athletes who were a massive stars at champs um taylor is one kebona david i can keep going on and on who develop horrific injuries that takes years for them to recover from and some never recover and this may be because of poor coaching i'm not knocking the coaches i'm not in a position to do so and that's not my intent it may be poor technique i mean whatever it is um maybe some of you don't remember you know that it was the the um, um yeah, the veteran high school track, uh, track and field coach, um, Michael Clark, a renowned sports physician, uh, Dr. Paul Wright, highlighted the, the threat of injury to athletes as a major concern heading into ISA Boys and Girls Athletic Championships. Uh, in fact, at one point, um, the, the Veteran Association had to insist, because one of the problems with champs, and I know you all know this, is that when a school, because the school is trying to get points, um, if an athlete can do the 100, the 200, the 400, the 4 by one they're going to let the athlete do it. And that stresses the athlete. I mean, you're 15, 16, 17 years of age, you are still developing physically, people. You are still a teenager that's going to do a lot of damage your body can't handle that and that's another reason why i think a lot of these athletes succumb to injury and many of them never recover from it remember i always say no injury is not just physiological it's also psychological so you are overworking these athletes there one athlete is doing i mean the amount of stuff that that chris taylor was doing was insane it's too much for one athlete to be doing now so those are, you know, three more than valid reasons. More than valid reasons. Um, injury, uh, the entitlement on the part of the winners, which, 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 which is one of the reasons why I think the, the big track clubs locally seem to avoid them or, or they don't seem to tran transform. The injury impacts them and sometimes they never ever recover from the injury. And um, they're not being prepared psychologically when they compete at this highest level so i do believe to some extent um you know i, I was going to say that uh it, it was one of the 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 medical the medical groups who deal with champs who who um forced uh, uh, boys and girls champs to end to to limit the amount of um uh, uh, um events that any athlete could do and i think they're going to try and tighten that again for 2022 Look, Champs produces remarkable athletes, and I don't think we should ever get rid of it. But like all great things, there are things that need to be fixed. Uh, the coaches, who are remarkable, need to, need to create an arm, if they don't or have one already, that prepares the athletes psychologically for the next level of athletics, if that's what they want to pursue. And I think many of them want to get to that next level. Um, two, I think... They need to explain to that uh, the the um, 
they need to explain to these athletes that uh you know the star complex it's great to be confident but being entitled you have to understand that the, the same way you had to work to get to this level in champs you're probably going to have to do it a hundred or thousand times that, that more work to get to that next level you get what i'm saying um so we need to prepare them and we need to be very careful in terms of the training techniques uh we should not overwork the athletes which lead to injury which means that we lose remarkable listen think about this if we were able to retain all these amazing athletes from champs for the last 20 years we would have dominated the athletics and world championships on indisputable indisputably look finally champs is a, a massive money machine i mean grace kennedy said the last champs this they invested eight to one million dollars uh in the event um we know that hotels uh in and around the area in the week of tramps makes millions of dollars not just from the schools but from spectators etc people come from overseas all over the world to 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 watch this remarkable um, event we know that champs inspires many remarkable people brianna williams said in an interview that she was inspired when she first came to jamaica and saw champs we know that champs sometimes gives us greats, the, the Usain Bolt, for instance. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't destroy them, but I think it definitely, we need to improve certain elements of champs. We, have, we need to deal with the, the element of injury. We need to actually start preparing the athlete psychologically, mentally, uh, emotionally, and physically for the next level. That's why they're not transformed. They're not um, transitioning to that next level. I mean, not all of them are gonna do this, but I think many of them could. And I think one of the reasons why coaches tend to, uh, the, the athletes who didn't do well at champs are the ones who uh, transition. Uh, it, maybe they're more, they're, they're, they're mentally more prepared. Maybe because they don't have a star complex, they realize that they have to work their, 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 their you know what, off to get to where they wanna go and um they're not suffering from numerous injuries you know so there are things with champs that needs to be tweaked and to, to make it better i don't think it's destroying our athletes but i think it certainly um contributes to one of the, it's one of the major reasons why that transition from amateur athlete to pro athlete is not the success rate is not as good but as i also pointed out the experts believe only two percent of, of amateur athletes ever become pros anyway so i would love to know your thoughts on the matter um do you think uh that the the boys and girls champs is jo destroying jamaica's you know future track stars do you think so i'm sure you're going to leave your comments and let me know um, of course, as always, please hit the subscribe button. It's really important to the channel. It helps the channel to grow. Uh, please hit that like button. The engagement is really important for the algorithm, which pushes the content out. And that's really, really important to the channel. So please hit the like button. Make sure you leave a comment. I really want to know your thoughts on this. I mean, it's a little long. It's, it's almost 24 minutes long, almost 25 minutes long. But I really want to discuss this issue and I really want to hear your thoughts. I know some of you agree with me and I know some of you disagree with me. I know some of you are going to ask me if I'm crazy to even ask a question. But I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, and as always, what we always say, bless up. Yeah.